You are now tuned in to Hot Topics with Donna. And on this show, we do one thing. Keep it real hot. That's honest, open, and transparent. If you didn't know, now you know. So sit back and unwind as we bring the vibe and a little bit of glorious sunshine to your heart, soul, and mind. Your lovely host, Hot Donna, will be with you in just a few moments. But while you wait, go ahead and set an atmosphere of peace in your space. If you can, cut the lights down low, get your hydration on, vibration zone. Cause tonight, you're about to receive some delicious food for your soul. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? It's about to get hot. You are indeed in the one and only place to be this evening. We appreciate you for joining us and in just a few moments, we about to turn the heat all the way up. That's right. It's about to go down right now on Hot Topics with Donna. Show your virtual love by smashing that thumbs up and heart icon as many times as you can. And without further ado, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing your host, the one and only Hot Donna. Hello, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in with another episode of Hot Topics with Donna. I am your host, Donna Taylor, and tonight I am interviewing a lovely lady that you guys will meet. Hey, Corey. Hey, Kenny. Thank you guys for joining. Listen, guys, today has been an awesome day, an amazing day. I hope you guys have had an amazing day. And so the word that I chose today is value, value. We put a lot of value on different things that, you know, we shouldn't put value on. But, you know, the most important thing is how do you value yourself? What, what do you think you're worth? Or is your worth or value determined by what people say? Or do you feel value just knowing who you are? So I'm going to read you the scripture where I get the word value from. It's Matthew 6 and 21. It says, for where your treasure is, there there your heart will be also. And the question is, what do you think is valuable in life? And it says, God is not impressed by a name brand. He is, however, very impressed by the love he sees in your heart, the honest words you speak, And the generosity you display. Be aware of what you find valuable because that is what your heart will spend the most time going after. And that is so true. When we put um, value, hey Crystal, when we put value in certain things, you know, our cars, our houses, you know, those are the things that we tend to focus more on. So the question that I have for you tonight what do you put your value on? What is your value on? And so while you're pondering about that, I'm going to bring my guest on and then we're going to just have some great dialogue. Thank you guys for tuning in with Hot Topics with Donna. And Hot is honest, open, and transparent. And that's what this platform is about. Being able to be honest, open, and transparent with yourself first and with others. Because like I always tell you guys before, we can always put a mask on and let people think or want people to think that they see one thing, but really and truly, we're not that either. You know, so now is the time in life 
and especially in this day and time, that we need to take our mask off. We need to be real with who we are. Shortcomings, flaws, and all. And because if people truly love you, they're going to love you with flaws, your shortcomings, your faults. And if you have friends in your life, they can say, hey, chick, you need to check your attitude. Or, hey, man, hey, you know you shouldn't be treating women this way. Or whatever it is, when we take the mask off, then people can be real with us. Because sometimes we get so self-absorbed that we think that we just got it all together. and We think we have arrived, but we haven't. We haven't. So I'm going to bring my guest on. And so you guys chime in. Tell me what you guys value. What do you think your value? What, what is value to you? While I bring my guests on, type it in the comments and let's have some great dialogue. Okay, so I have invited my guest. So I am just waiting for her to come on. Um, but yeah, what is your value? Some people put value on clothes, shoes. Sometimes we even put value on people. We, we get so consumed with trying to please people that we forget that they're just people just like we are. So we can't allow things and people to, to make us feel less than who God say we are. Hey, Stephanie. So I am waiting for my guest. Okay, so we, uh, Chloe, if you're on here, if you're doing it from your phone, then you should see the green icon that's, um, that will let you join my live. But if you're doing it from a laptop, it's gonna be difficult. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hey, Robin. So I'm waiting for her to see if she's on her laptop or on her phone. So we can get her on here. Robin, you better say it. I know that's right. Happiness is more than anything. And you know, for me at this point in my life, just like Robin, I value... Um, I value my happiness and I value my peace. My peace. Okay, um, Chloe, I um, I saw it, but it wouldn't allow me to accept you because it says um, person that want to come on the live is not available. So let's try it again. So Crystal, my Crystal said my value is to live my life to the fullest. Amen to that. I mean, and you know, we only get one shot at this life. One shot. One shot. I hope I'm not going to have the same. Oh, okay. And Crystal, you're so right because a lot of times we can get so caught up in everything. <clears throat> we forget to value our own lives. And we only have one shot at this thing. And if we don't get this life right on this side, then, hey, who are we? Who are we? So, hi, how are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I am good. So, it is nice to meet you. I am Donna, so you already know that. So, the question, well, I always have a word for my guests and people. And the quest, the word for you today and my guests is value. Um, some people said they value their happiness. Some say they value their life, just living it to the fullest. What are some things that you value right now at this stage in your life? Um, at this stage in my life, I really value peace and understanding. Yes, yes, yes. So can you introduce yourself and tell people who you are, where are you from, and then we're just going to go ahead and just have some great dialogue um, tonight. And thank you for um, being on Hot Topics with Donna. Sure, no problem. Um, my name is Miss Cleo. I am a cosplaying modeling gaming chick from Pennsylvania and I'm just really enjoying living my life right now making seeing things that I've worked hard for come to fruition so what part of Pennsylvania are you from um outside of Philadelphia is this area called Lansdale oh okay because I have a daughter-in-law that um is from Walken, is it Walken's Bearing, something like that? Yeah. Yeah, she's from there. And so 
with this cos um, cosplaying, can you explain to my viewers what that is? I looked it up, and so if I'm not mistaken, it's pretty much you're coming in to character, if you will. Like if I want it to be like Superwoman, you know, so I will make myself in that character. Right. So that's what it is, essentially. So cosplaying is like, just like, like you said, taking a character from a movie, a book, or comic that you really are inspired by and mm -hmm. bringing it to life. And I like cosplay because every do everything doesn't have to be perfect as the original. You know, you can pretty much interpret it and show it how you see the character to you. And so who, I've seen a lot of your stuff, so is there one particular character that you admire the most? Um, yes, actually, it would be Miss Cleo because I made her up and I made her up from playing World of Warcraft. She was my shadow priest on that game, which I still play. So Right. <laughs> right. Um, my friend Crystal, she said she loves Disney Princess. Crystal, <laughs> I got to see you dress up like that. And so, I think, now what shoot you did, you was in a casket, coffin. Mm -hmm. So what made you do that? Because I'm like, I don't want to be in one until it is time. <laughs> so what made you, what made you um, come up with that? You know, a lot of people are so afraid of death and coffins mm -hmm. and stuff. And I said, this is one of the most expensive boxes you'll ever be in. It's your last box. And right. nobody knows what it feels like while you're alive, but you pay, you know, you pay into all preparations for this box, mm -hmm. so. So did you have to pay for it or did you rent it? No, it was part of a set at a studio that I went to, they rented oh. it. And so, is cosplaying still a part of modeling, but it's just in a different form, if you will? Yeah, to a degree. I would say mm -hmm. that's true. And I think they go hand in hand, you know? Okay. Because and if so, you... Go ahead. Go ahead. If you spend hours on a costume, or like months building a costume, mm -hmm. you want to show that costume off in the best light that you can. And so how much do you spend on costumes? Because you, you've had some um, great costumes. So do you rent them or do you purchase them? I purchase them and I make them. Oh, so you sew as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's fun. <laughs> and so, with, so what have been the challenges when you get ready to put a shoot together? What have been the challenges for you in, the, in getting the right photographer? Does that help too? Um, yeah, like you gotta have a rapport with the photographer so that you know each other's style, so you kind of know what you expect and you, and you brainstorm beforehand on ideas and concepts. And so that's really important that you have communication with your photographer so you can talk about what you envision and what they envision. And how long, do, how long does it take you, once you come up with the character, how long does it take you to do the preparation before you actually do the shoot? Do you kind of do a test run with your makeup to see how you want it to be? Um. No, because I taught myself how to do makeup. And so a mm -hmm. lot of times I don't do a dry run. I just, I can look at the picture and imitate the same thing that's on a picture. Wow. So um, when you was growing up, did you always have this idea of doing modeling slash cosplay? I did. Um, I actually used to say I want to be a doctor and a model and 
something else, you know, I used to have on there, but I'm like, hey, part of it's came true. <laughs> <laughs> so do you still think you want, I mean, do you not have a desire to be a doctor at this um, time in your life? No, I mean, I'll be going back to school to finish off my RN, but that's as far as I want to take it. So what do you do full time? Uh, work at Amazon. Oh, so do you get good deals? <laughs> it's a great company to work for. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so, and you, so when you do your cosplay and then you are a gamer, like yeah. how do you, how how do that go hand in hand with you? Um, I got into gaming first, PC gaming on World of Warcraft, and mm -hmm. I really liked the lore and I liked the way the characters look. So I started mm -hmm. looking at different cosplayers on uh, YouTube, and I was mm -hmm. like, I can do this. And so, you know, it just goes from there. So how many? people have you did as far as cosplay how many characters would you say you've had because I've seen a lot of pictures and I don't really know like the characters but I've seen you've done several several um I think that's about fair I did I did do pyramid head off of um silent hill I just have not put put those pictures out yet so oh. speaking of pictures, some of your pictures um, do do expose a lot. Do mm -hmm. have you gotten any negative feedback from like your friends and your families with the type of pictures? Because you know, like yourself, like I model too, but sometimes people don't understand that it's just modeling or whatever so have you gotten any negative feedback from your family you know and friends about your pictures um i had a couple family members be kind of scared of what i was going to expose <laughs> um but now that they've seen i do it tastefully and i'm mm -hmm. respectful and i'm still respectful to myself with it they feel right. a lot better right and so was it hard when you had to explain to them that you were taking these type of pictures and it's just acting if you will you know what it was initially mm -hmm. but now everybody's now, calmed down <laughs> well that's good do you have kids i do okay so how how old are your kids and how <laughs> do you explain to them if they're of age to kind of understand the concept um, I have a 15 year old, a 13 year old, a nine year old and a seven year old. And I explained to the two older ones that I like to take pictures and I like to express myself through pictures and it makes me really happy. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, if you're happy, that's all we want for you, mom. Right. And right. I, you know, so it was easier than what I thought it was going to be. And so what you said makes you happy. Were there a time that you didn't feel happy or you wasn't at a happy place that you started wanting to take these pictures so you can do what made you truly happy? Yeah, it was a time. Like I lived in Alabama for eight years and mm -hmm. I went through a really deep depression when I was in Alabama. Right. And I just was not good. I had gained a lot of weight and mm -hmm. I didn't go anywhere. And so now that I have the energy to keep pushing, I kind of want to stick with that. And like my kids get to see me happy now versus for a long time they didn't. Yeah. And Taryn says, um, she said, our kids love us for us, even when we don't think so. And she's right. And, you know, depression is a really, I'm not going to say, it's just on the rise. And a lot of people deal with depression and some deal with it differently because I, you know, went through a time when I was depressed. And sometimes, like you, you, you had to find something to channel 
your energy to 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 kind of get you back to yourself and you mm -hmm. chose and you chose your pictures and cosplay but did you at any time have to like do medication but how did you pull yourself out of it before you start taking your pictures um at one point i was on medication and then mm -hmm. we figured out it was the hormones that i was taking so i weaned myself off of those and i pretty much went to a holistic intake of medication um and i changed my diet to like pescatarian and paleo and wow. I would start doing, I would do at least seven miles a day walking because I knew that the sunshine is a natural antidepressant. So I made sure I had some good hours in the sun. So do you still follow those regimens, you know, as walking, still eating, you know, healthy to keep yourself from going back to that dark place? Yeah. I am working on it. Um, the walk-in was a little difficult this year just because it was so hot outside. Mm -hmm. So I had to cut back on that. Right, um, right. But now that it's cooled down, I'll probably be doing it again until I can't, you know, because of snow. But when did you find out or when did you know something wasn't right when you became depressed? Um when I stopped wanting to come out of my room because like I got to like a hermit phase where I would just play on my PC. I had my game and PC in my room, so I had to go anywhere. And you had kids at this time, correct? Yeah. So did they not understand like why is mommy just wanting to stay, you know, isolated? So did you have to force yourself to like come out and kind of do the mommy things, the mommy duty, like, you know, trying to make sure they got what they needed. Was that a challenge for you when you wanted to be like, okay, I'm good. Just let me be. Was that a struggle? Oh yeah. Because like my health was declining and I was having surgery like every two to three months for years. Wow. And so I never be in the hospital for like months at a time. So, yeah. So, so where are you now? How are you now? I'm excellent. Like, um, I barely even have any hospital trips. Um, that's so cool. that's awesome. I got my job and I'm doing the modeling and I'm building with it. Good. So I'm pretty so, good. I'm good. You find yourself, because sometimes, I know for me, sometimes when you feel like the weight is on your shoulder, mm -hmm. sometimes for me, I don't want to talk. I don't want to be bothered, but yet and still, it's like you don't want to be bothered, but yet and still, you do want to be bothered. So how do you keep yourself from sinking back into that that dark place, if you will? Because sometimes for me, you know, you think like, it seems like everything is going good, but then there's something on the inside that you can't explain, like, today's just not the day. Um, I keep from going back to that place because you got to give yourself understanding. You have to understand just the way you would love on a stranger and you would tell them not to hate themselves for having mm -hmm. one bad day is the same love that you have to give yourself in that moment. And so right. it might mean you take a bath with some candles and you mm -hmm. do things or you take your time doing your tasks. But you and have to love on you before you can love anybody else. You you are so true. And so and now that you are in a good place, your cosplay truly keeps you there. Because when I looked at your pictures, you can tell from looking at your pictures, you put everything into yeah. those pictures. You know, yeah. and some some out like uh, you know, and like for me, I'm still I I like to stay in the box. I I like to stay in the box. <laughs> okay, but the thing about it is, I've started coming out of my box. You know, because I even took a picture with a guy, and I had on like a bodysuit, and like my boys, they were like, "You're naked," and I'm like, "But I wasn't naked." You you see what I'm saying? So when you do these shoots, because sometimes you may have a lot of cleavage and sometimes you may um, be exposed, you know, with your butt out or whatever.
But mm -hmm. at that moment, when you're doing those shoots, are you just thinking, I got to nail this I, because that is your happy place? Yeah. Or I just get really lost with posing. I just keep going and going and we get really good pictures. <laughs> so, is there a level of trust that you have with your photographers? Because it yeah. has some of your pictures, like I said, some, some people would say they're risque, but there has to be a level of respect and trust with that photographer to, to have these amazing photos come out like you want them to come out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You have to trust them or you at least have to have feel a good vibe or else it'll show. So do you don't. take that one with you? Because I, I interviewed a photographer not too long ago and he was saying he always, you know, would suggest if that's their first time shooting to bring someone with them until mm -hmm. you get that report. Do you do that? Do you take people with you, like a girlfriend with you when you haven't shot with this person before? Yep. I take my sister with me. Well, I mean, and so, and then, so when you take them, so it allows you to just be who you are. Yeah. Knowing that if anything goes wrong, hey, I got my sidekick, you know, with me. So, you know, I can be safe. Yeah. I, I felt like that when my best friend went, went with me the first time me and a photographer I was so glad she was there we still talk about it so let me ask you this question you did a photo shoot um and I don't know the theme of it it was you and a girl you you and a another um female right mm -hmm. what was that cosplay about um I, I'm trying to think which one you're talking about I don't know <laughs> What, you do you got, remember what the scene was? I, I don't. I don't. It was just like y'all was leaning towards each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I don't know what it was because it didn't, you know, I didn't, um, couldn't figure it out. But it was you and her and it was almost as if you and her was a couple the, the way it was. And I don't know. And I think both of you either you didn't have clothes on or you had something sheer on. Oh, you're talking about my implied pictures. Yes. So how do you come up with those? Like, what was the concept for that one? It's just making art, those ones. Right. So did you get a lot of backlash for that one? No. 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 And so, where do you see yourself in the next next year with your cosplaying? Do have you thought of other ideas, other um, characters that you want to create or that you're working on now? Yeah, I'm actually working on a couple costumes as we speak. Um, my goal is to hit up more comic cons next year and actually um, be streaming. So is there money to be made in cosplaying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you can get sponsors. And like I said, it ties in with the gaming. So you get sponsors to stream on Twitch. It's all different kinds of things. So are you leaning towards making this a full-time career? And, and do you have sponsors that you've been talking to? I am leaning towards making it a full-time uh, career. Mm -hmm. I have not talked to any sponsors, but I'm also just like starting to look at the esports tournaments and stuff. Okay. And so where are you residing right now? Um, PA. Pennsylvania. So you Pennsylvania. I don't know why yeah. I was thinking you live like in South Carolina somewhere. No. <laughs> <laughs> so so do so do you ever think you will relocate if doing this will cause you to relocate? Would you would you relocate? Yeah. With no with no hesitation. No. So how how would you how would your kids feel if they, you just came and say, Hey, I got this, you know, opportunity 
and we're going to move, you know, to California. How how do you think that would affect them, knowing that this is something you want to do? Um, I think they would be okay because that's you know the way they are. They're very resilient. Um, <laughs> And like I said, they truly just want me to be happy. And and that's good. So are there boys or girls? Two boys, two girls. Okay. So do you think, so with your girls, how do you explain that to them? Because you know, like I said before, you know how people are. They, we, you know, people get in such judgment of what we do in the industry that we're in. Mm -hmm. And so your daughters especially how do you explain to them that this is just a form of acting but you're just putting it on pictures um i'm lucky that both of them are pretty smart and they watch a lot of youtube and they follow a lot of influence you know influencers so okay. honestly it's not been hard because they already know you know what it's about and they know why i'm doing it and all of that so when you are shooting mm -hmm. how long is one shoot because let's just say the one that you came out of the um when you did it in the casket or what how long was that shoot five hours five hours yeah why five hours can you kind of explain that because because um, you have different you have different sets that you're doing it's not just that one look that's just one look of other looks you know and you have to have time to change and wardrobe and hair and all that and you do all of this yourself yes wow <laughs> if you're gonna do a five hour shoot you might need you a makeup artist but you said you do your own makeup so what mm -hmm. other costumes did you have when you came out the casket what what other, what other costumes did you have because i only saw the one that you had on the white you had on the veil mm -hmm. So were there more or less with your costume? Um, it was more. I like I did like a peppermint patty look since I had the orangey red hair. And I think that was it for the coffin was just those two. So is there anything else that you want to try with your cos cosplaying or your gaming? Uh, no, not really. So let me ask you this question. We, we talked a little bit about, you know, your value. Mm -hmm. Do you think that people would say, because you do that, you don't value who you are? They could try <laughs> it, but that, I mean, that speaks more of them. That's projection. Right. So they could try it. But if you was in a dark place, Mm. Would that have affected you if you were still in that dark place? No, because I know who I am. I know who I am and I know what I'm not. Right. And so even when you was depressed, you still knew that you still had value. You had just was going through some things, but you still didn't lose who you were. Yes. But how? Because some people, it's like, I guess depression affects people different ways. So how did you manage to say, I am still value, even though I'm going through this depression? Because I just allowed myself that understanding and patience and love, like I love enough to say that, love myself enough to say I need a break from this or that. You right. Know? Mm -hmm. And so it's, um, so with that, your next photo shoot um how would you describe that this coming up do, how, or should i say how often do you shoot um i was shooting often but i'm not going to be shooting again until next month and my mm -hmm. next photo shoot is just holidays and so what is your character going to be or are you going to let it be a surprise i'm going to let it be a surprise <laughs> <laughs> I, say that. I should have known you was going to say that. So do you ever um, intend to do some with your children? 
more like a family style? Um, possibly. So are when you do this one next month, are you going to do it by yourself or are you going to have someone else with you? I'm going to do it by myself because I, I know these people. Okay. And so you do you have a team like a photographers that's on your team or how how do you um shoot with these photographers? Do they reach out to you or do you reach out to them when you see they work and you say, "Hey, I want to shoot with you?" It goes both ways. Um, okay. And I do have, but I do have, I have a team now of regular photographers I'm working with. Wow. So when you have your team, do you have other female models that's a part of your team as well? So you I can, can pull, I can, it just depends on what it is. Okay. So do you, do you like shooting by yourself or do you welcome other models or do you pull other models and say, hey, I like your look. Let's try this. Um, I offer other models. I like it both. I like shooting by myself sometimes. And I like, you know, shooting together with other models. Yeah. So what else is there you want, you know, us to know about you here on Hot Topic? Um, just stay tuned. Like, please follow me because there's and more to come follow you where do they go to follow you uh cleo doll on facebook and miss cleo baby on instagram and because i i um i we haven't met but one of our mutual friends i don't know how to say his name raise raise mm -hmm. have you met him in person yet no yeah, so I will be having him on the show, and okay. that's how I I um got you. But I truly thought you lived in like South Carolina. I don't know why, because I try to do my homework, but you didn't have anything on there, like <laughs> like <laughs> you yeah. say. So, but I just really you know appreciate you taking the time out to come. And if what is one thing you would tell, especially women? that find themselves into uh, depression, what would you tell them? What would be one piece of advice you would give them so they can, they won't stay there? Um, just build up your belief in yourself. Because, you know, you can do it. You got the powers in you, but you have to believe in yourself in order to do it. Right, right. And so, do you think faith plays a lot in that too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, next month we can be looking for some, it's going to be pretty hot or it's going to be Christmas. It's going to be a mix. <laughs> and Jane said, follow the magazine page also. Yes. It's, um... Hi, hi, my son Cedric. My son Cedric is on here. Um, but yeah, but I just really and truly appreciate you coming on. Um, I I love meeting new people. I love when people can come on here and just be open, honest, and transparent. Because, like I said, depression is real. Our lives are real. And when we're doing different things, people need to know what we're doing. Because you know what? There may be some photographers on here, some people that might want to reach out to you and say, "Hey, I have something. I you know I want to run a project by you." And that's what this platform is about. This exposing people because we all have different people in different areas that we can network and that's what you know when god gave me this platform that's what this platform is about is like making sure that people know that they're ordinary people doing extraordinary things and you know what and even when we have a setback we still can come back and just continue to be great because some people and you know some people don't come back from depression yeah, Some do. Don't, don't come back from depression. And, you know, and thank God that, you know, you, you know, and myself, we, we had tools that we use to keep us out of those dark places. But it doesn't mean that we can't go back there. Mm -hmm. it just, Absolutely. It just means that we are choosing not to and we're choosing 
like we said, we're valuing our peace. We're valuing our happiness because for me, peace is everything. Yeah. Peace, yeah it is yeah. everything. So <laughs> start trying to interrupt my peace. You, you know, you can't do that because sometimes in life, life will swallow us if we allow it to. You know, if we allow people to just suck us, you know, and and it'll cause us to revert back to where we worked so hard to move forward. That's true. You know, and so, and I'm so thankful and grateful that you are at a place that you're whole, you're healed, and that you're choosing to just go forward. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm truly thankful and blessed. That, that, and that's, and that's the beauty of it. When we know that we're blessed and when we know that we know that we know, you know, Mm -hmm. every day may not be a good day, but at least it's not a dark day. You know, right, exactly. And that's what I say. You know, I'm not gonna always have a great day, but I rather not have a great day than have a dark day that puts me in a bad place. Right. You know, because sometimes you know we go through things, and you know, and we can find ourselves in those dark places. But I thank God that you know we're at a point that we can recognize when we're headed in those yeah. dark. Places. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and I'm just looking forward to see what else you're doing. Um, But like I said, whatever I can do, whatever you post, I don't mind sharing it. That's who I am. I share people's stuff because that's what it's about. It's about networking. It's about sharing people's stuff. It's about promoting and not feeling that it's taken away from me because I'm promoting you. Right. And when we can get that down pat, then we all win. We all, it's a win-win for everybody. It is. You know, but when we get it, I don't know when we're going to get it. But that's, <laughs> that's, that's the platform that I'm, you know, what Hot Topics is about. It's making sure everybody wins. Okay. And because they see you, they see your pictures. You're more than just your pictures. Mm-hmm. You have some challenges, but you overcame them because sometimes people look at us and people may look at you, oh, she's doing this and she's doing that, but they don't realize that, you know what, I haven't always been in this place. I haven't yeah. always been in this place, you know, and just like with me, because I tell people, hey, I can do whatever I want to, you know, you can put your wig on, put your makeup on, put your lashes on, and people be like, wow, she got it going on. No, but don't realize inside. Right. You're dying, you're crying, but no one sees that. They just see the outer. Right. And that's why I like seeing real people. Yeah, that's not, I understand. That not afraid to share their challenges, you know, and that's why Hot Topics is honest, open, and transparent. And when people can see that you can be real, then people will be like, wow, if they can do it, you know what? I can do this too. It may look different, but there's hope. You're giving them hope when we can be honest with ourselves first. And like you said, you got to be honest with self first in order to to just you do, do what you need. You know, but mm-hmm. I, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you just for gracing this platform. But like I said, if you need me to share something, I will. If you're ever in North Carolina, just hit me up. But I am really, okay. truly thankful that you took the time out to come way from Pennsylvania, <laughs> you know, because people, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't mean that. I mean, I'm telling you, half of my guests, believe it or not, I have never, ever met. Never. Wow. Never, ever. But when people, um, what my son say, right, because it's not other people's responsibility to see our hurt, we have to get to a place where we're willing to be vulnerable with people in our lives. Not everyone is out to get us. And sometimes, I'm trying to see what he said, and sometimes we don't even give our friends chances to be friends to us by how how we feel at times. Oh, I don't know why I lost her. You're right, right, son. You're so right. Um, I don't know what happened to uh, Miss Chloe, um, but we was going to end anyway. But that is so true, Cedric. Um, you know, I, I truly, you know, thank God for my friends and, you know, for you guys that's on here, Cedric is my oldest son and, you know, him and I always are able to have some real candid 
conversations. Um, and that's the beauty of being able to be their mother, knowing that I have shortcomings and knowing that I have faults and knowing that they still love me and loving me through it. They still loving me through it. And so that's why it's so important. When we have friends or when we have loved ones, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Don't be afraid to show them that you don't have it all together. And we don't. We don't. We're not going to have it all together until we get to the other side. And I just want to thank um, Miss Chloe Baby for coming on here, guys. You know, like I said, looks can be deceiving. And when people are going through, their, everyone that I've had on my show have had some type of challenges. And depression is some of the main ones and some other issues. But one thing that we need to remember, people are human first. They're human before they're mamas, daughters, sisters, brothers. We're human. Do we always get it right? No, we don't. We don't always get it right. And that's why I chose the word value because we have gotten things so messed up because society had told us or have fooled us into thinking that value is the stuff. Value is the stuff that we have, your car, your clothes, where you live, your, your clique, if you will, the church you attend. And just like the scripture said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be. So if all I thought about is where I live, I'm going to just, just be like consumed with that. But when are we going to get back to the root and truly love people how we used to? How we used to? When are we going to get, I can remember growing up in the projects in Sanford, and it was a neighborhood. We were family. We can go to each other's houses and love each other. Our parents could discipline us if we did something wrong. And that was the core value of who we were. We didn't value all this stuff. We value respecting each other, the kids value playing together, being able to go over to Miss Robin's house, being able to go over to Miss Linda's house. We value those type things. But now we have gotten so consumed with stuff. Being vulnerable gives us a different and a new perspective if we allow it to. Lynetta, you're right. But you know what? People don't want to be vulnerable because they, they feel like that's a sign of weakness. And one thing that I value is that I can be vulnerable to my friends, truly vulnerable. And when I know I jacked up, they don't have to tell me I jacked up because I can go to them and say, look, I, I, I blew it. I blew it. But that's the beauty of it. When we can be vulnerable, when you can be vulnerable to your friends, when you can be vulnerable to who you are, you have taken the mask off. You have taken the mask off because you're tired of pretending, you're tired of playing, and you're tired of letting people see the fake you. Because eventually, it's going to get so consuming that you truly will lose who you are. You would truly do that. I have no problem with it and thankful and thankful for it. Call me out whenever needed. That's love. Absolutely. Absolutely. I tell you, you know, people, you guys know Lynette is on here. Robin's on here. You know, those are my girls. And I got other girlfriends, Jen and Anna and Sadrina, them. But I'm telling you, when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable and not afraid like, ooh, if I tell them I did this, are they still going to love me? If I tell them that I went somewhere and I shouldn't, are they still going to love me? If I tell them that I flat out failed 
in whatever area that it may be, are they not going to love me? And guys, I'm telling you, if you don't have those type of friends or people in your life that you're not afraid to be vulnerable to, with, if you're not afraid to say, mm, I'm a hot mess, because I had to go to my friends and be like, I'm a hot mess. I had to go to them and be like, you know what? I felt like being passive aggressive to some people, and I did. And they checked me because they, I mean, they already know when I tell them I did it. And I know I shouldn't have, but I can go to them and say, this is what I did. No, I shouldn't have, but I did. And when you do those things, it may feel good when you're doing them because you just know, like, I just got to get back. But when you have friends that check you with love and be like, why you do that? You know you shouldn't have done that, but you do it anyway. And I'm a living testimony because, guys, I'm telling you, sometimes my passive aggressive self likes to come out, just being real with you. But then I have friends that can bring me back in. But one thing I do have is the Holy Spirit, and that conviction is worse. And you got to go, like, ha, ah, got to go make it right. So, what are you? putting your value in? Is it your clothes? Is it your house? Is it your job? What? Because remember, all those things can be easily replaced. But what about your heart? What is your heart putting the most value on? And when you can sit down and honestly ask yourself that question, then you can start changing. Then you can start changing. Then you can say, am I putting too much value on my clothes? Am I putting too much value on where I work and trying to please these people at work? Or trying to keep up with my neighbors? If they plant flowers, I'm going to plant a tree. What? But the question is, what do you put your value on? Because you know what? We can lie to people, but God already sees our heart, and he already knows what we're putting our value on. And sometimes, do we miss the mark? Yes, we do. Because I miss it, miss, miss it sometimes myself. And then I have to get my own self back and check and say, hmm. You're spending too much time over here thinking about this. You're not doing this right here. You should be doing it, but you keep putting it off because you're trying to still do this. So what is your value on? Is there something you have been placing too much value on? Because, you know, everything is a balance. It's a balance. But I am so thankful that you guys tuned in. Miss Chloe, I don't know what happened to her, but I'm thankful that she um, was able to get on away from Pennsylvania. So if you know someone that have a story, even you that have a story that you may want to share with um, Hot Topics with Donna, just inbox me. And on a, um, I'm going to say a sour note. Um, I will kind of give you guys some updates. Um, November will be my last um, go run with Fresh Look Bling. So I'm going to be probably doing some live, you know, this week, this weekend with Fresh Look Bling. Um, my season is up with that. So I will be um, going on live selling some jewelry up until the end of November. I'm excited. I'm, you know, I'm just excited about where God is leading me. So my season with that is going to be up and I'm okay with that. And so you know what, sometimes we put value on things and then sometimes it's time to, you know, to grow and move when he say move. And so with that, yeah, um, Fresh Look Bling will no longer be in November, the end of November. So um, you guys just wait and see um, when I come back on, but I am truly, truly excited. 
So if you um, catch me tomorrow, I'll um, have a, a guest. She was on here before, but her and I had such great dialogue and it was so much more we could have covered, but we didn't want to hold up too much time on um, Hot Topics with Donna. So I will be back tomorrow at 6.30 with a guest and I hope to see you. But my question, hey, Sister Nita, but my question is to you before I leave, what are you putting all your value in? What are you putting all your value in? And the scripture was Matthew 6 and 21. And I want to say, I love you guys. Have a wonderful night. Be blessed. And like I said, do a self-examination and ask yourself, is there things in my life that I'm putting more value on than I should? And if you can answer that question honestly, then you'll start making some changes. But until then, I am your host, Donna Taylor, and this has been another episode of Hot Topics with Donna, where we interview ordinary people doing extraordinary things in their lives and their community. And you guys have a blessed night, and I will see you this time tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye.